So we're sitting there, and all of a sudden the contractions are coming a little quicker, a little quicker. And, uh, you know, you're kind of waiting on the door, waiting on the door. And, well, you hear, finally hear that clipboard on the door. And we're like, okay, doctor's back. And they go, uh, yeah, all right, who's, uh, let's check your dilation. It was nurse little Becky. We exchanged horrified glances. I have not seen her since. He makes me a deal, and he says, I will make you a deal. You are grounded for one month from your phone, from any social activities. I was lucky they let me go to school. And if at the end of that month, this boy still wants to see you, you can date him. Reasonable dad, right? Smart dad. He knew if I disappeared for a month, that dude would find somebody else and be gone. And he was right. He was gone. Month goes by. I opened by. the door, and I leaned out to just let it all go, because he was coming. And I just, I went, and I made this noise. Like somebody was, like, carving up a cow with a spoon or something. I, and it was just like this incredible burp. But it wasn't, nothing came out. I was like, oh, my God, I made this crazy noise. And I hear this applause. <laughs> there were these guys from my neighborhood behind me, and they'd heard it. And they were like, "Yay, really good!" Yay. I look over at Father, and I'm like, "I don't think I can go on." He goes, "Oh, you're fine. You're fine." Uh, so, like, I'm, I'm I'm really green now. And we get to communion, and I've got the patch in my hand. For those of you that haven't ever been to a Catholic mass, just imagine everybody in the entire school who judges you daily staring up at you and thinking. Who is this guy? Half falling asleep, not really paying attention. Uh, until communion, when everybody's looking at you on the altar. And all of a sudden, after I receive communion, it hits me. And I puke all over the priest, all over the altar, all over myself, all over everything that everybody's paying attention to. <laughs> And it was this awkward, like, green puke, you know. It's, it was disgusting. <laughs> so she starts, slides off her chair in full form, starts doing the hammer dance <laughs> back and forth. It's like, hey, everybody, it's the MC Hammer on me. Well, the guy turns around and just kind of looks at us. And not like, you know, with malice, but just kind of like concern. He's just staring at us. And for a minute, we just kind of stood and looked back at him. We're like, oh, shit. And other people start to look like, that's MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear something, this really strange noise coming from the living room. <laughs> I hear the price is right. I love the price is right. So I kind of creep in and I walk and here is roommate number three. And he is laying on the couch masturbating to Bob Barker and yeah. the, uh, uh, the Price is Right. And he did not know that I was in the house. So we're sitting there, and the preacher takes the, the pulpit, and we can feel the clock behind us burning a hole in our neck because we know, without being told, that if we turn around, we will spontaneously combust. <laughs> so we cannot check. And see what time it is. We just know that there's an hour coming. And we're going to have to listen. So behind us is the clock. Ow, baby. In front of us is the preacher yelling. Yelling at us. Scaring us to death. Man, preacher suddenly lifts his voice and, Yea, I say to you, there are demons in this place. Demons that must be cast out. And there is a lead demon. There is a demon who is darker than all the demons, and he is selling this thing. I mean, and he goes, he builds up to the suspense, and he goes, and his name is Dracula. 